All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, all praises, all glory, and all honors going to Yahweh by Shemi El Shai, by Shemi Kakudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Um, uh, blessings to you and your families on this day of atonement. <clears throat> um, may Yahweh by Shemi El Shai continue to uh, bless and, and, and give uh, us uh, grace and mercy in these times. Um, now, what I have here is the African American Family Heirloom Bible. All right, um, just another, you know, Bible that was put together. Um, and uh, I was just looking through it, and uh, basically, what I want to do is uh, j just show you the confusion that these different uh, Bibles that are made now. You know these modern um, type Bibles, right? Um, you know, are basically put out there to bring confusion. You know, not necessarily the scriptures themselves. It's not the scriptures themselves, and that's what people get confused. You know, that the Bible itself has been tampered with. But what has been going on in recent years is, is just a lot of this new style new names for the bible that they've been putting out here when when you go into the bible itself um let's see i want to get uh because basically this bible in itself is it's just the regular um the regular king james version of the scriptures bear me one second All right, all right, let's it. Now, see, this is just the regular uh, King James Version Bible. You know, the scriptures themselves are the same scriptures that we use out on the streets. Um, but just a lot of the information and summaries and things that they put in the beginning of the, uh, and these new modern scriptures are, um, are different, you know. Which it has here, the African presence in the Bible. And uh, uh, some things are on point, but some things are are going off because basically they uh, are basically saying that, well, yeah, you know, there were black people and there were Africans involved uh, with pushing the word, but they have nothing to do with the Israelites, right? But this is what, you know, and there's a lot more things that I, I'll probably through the spirit um bring out um but i just want to get you know straight to the point of this now remind you that this isn't a uh the uh african-american family heirloom bible right and <laughs> you see the images right uh the garden of eden right and you have adam and eve here which are what so-called white people you, you know these are these uh renaissance images and this is what they push out here the so-called african americans which we understand that we are the israelites that are spoken about in the bible you know we are the the um lord's chosen people right but then you have these these renaissance images painted in here now at the same time right you have these images in the same Bible. And now you see Adam and Eve is black. Now, if you were a child, right? Any child, you know, that gets into the scriptures, but more so, especially a, a so-called black Hispanic or Native American child, and you were to open this family book that, you know, your family probably had laid out on the coffee table or, or on the mantle, and you open this book. Now, being a child, you know, you're going to look to images, which is why, they make these types of Bibles, you know, to, to show illustrations of the people represented in the scriptures. Now, going back, right, all right the Garden of Eden, of, of Eden, <laughs> the Garden of Eden, right, and you have so-called white people, which they are Edomites, but they depict Adam and Eve as being, uh, so-called white people but then 
here in the same Bible, right? I'm not changing the book. This is the same book, right? Okay. They depict Adam and Eve as so-called black people. So that's confusion. All right. And this is why the most important thing to do is to read the scriptures. Okay. Right. So let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to Genesis. Right. The second chapter. And let's see what the Bible says about Adam and Eve. So this is Genesis chapter two. Right. And uh, I'll start at verse four. It says, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created and the day that the Lord powers made the heaven and the, the earth and the heavens. Now, this Lord here, this is uh, the heavenly father, Yahweh, right? And the, this God here, which is the same God's God in uh, Genesis first chapter are speaking about the angels, the powers, because in the Hebrew, uh, the word God there is Allah, which means angels. Okay. All right. Powers. So it's, it, it should really read, uh, where am I at? In verse four, it should really read, uh, the Lord's angels made the heaven, made the earth and the heavens. And when you read, uh, John, the first chapter, that would also include Yahweh Shai, um, as well being a part of the heavenly angels creating the heaven and the earth, all right? The heavens and the earth. All right. So now it says in verse five, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord's Yahweh's angels powers had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So basically what it's saying back then is there was this dew, just like we see today, early morning that watered the um, earth for the crops to grow. But now the point is in verse seven, it says, and the Lord God, or, or really Yahweh's angels, Yahweh's powers, all right, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay? So now the earth is created. We understand that there was a mist that was coming up a dew and we understand that that um when you look at any any uh any type of uh, rich nutrient rich soil it's a dark brown all right it's a brown color so they the scriptures made it a point to say they look the 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 heavenly father created man of the dust of the ground meaning the elements all right the same elements that are around us you got carbon and all these elements. That's what the Heavenly Father's angels use to form man. Okay? Um, but when you go into these images here, you see something different. That is depicted in these Renaissance style uh, uh, paintings. Okay? So now when you go to here... This is a more accurate depiction of Adam and Eve. Okay? From the earth. Okay? Now you can say, oh, well, that's racist. That's, 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 that's this, that's that. But what does the scripture say? That's why I made a point to read the scripture. Now, this is Israelite one-on-one -on -one basics. But, you know, I was just flipping through. Right, because I noticed that this was a so-called African American family heirloom Bible, and but then I see these images here. Okay, so now let's go back to these images, right? And we see, right? That's the art, and what do you see? So-called black men, you know, and now all the nations, right? At that time period, were uh. Uh, dark-skinned people. Now, this is a depiction of uh, the uh, 12 patriarchs selling Joseph in the uh, 
for captivity because you see the uh, multicolored coat here that Joseph had and they're selling them to who? Those um, Midianites, which come from Ishmael, right? Which we know that Ishmael are what? Dark-skinned people as well, all right? And this is, um, is, is going into that story in the Genesis, okay? All right? Now, even though that this is a depiction of the uh, Moses being born, but we understand that back then, the majority of the people in the earth and today are dark-skinned people. So now when you go go into the Apocrypha, all right, which I have here, right? Let's go to the, the, the a book of 1 Maccabees. 1 uh, Maccabees, all right, 1 Maccabees. This is, what, chapter 3, right? 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, in the Apocrypha, all right, verse 48. And we bring the scripture out a lot, right? But let me start at uh, I started at 46. It says, Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Masfa over against Jerusalem. For in Masfa was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day. And put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes. And that's what we're doing today. Okay, fasting. All right, for mercy from the Lord. Because at this time, the heathen had came into Jerusalem to destroy us. Okay. Now, this is the point. Verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, which we understand is the Bible, the scriptures. All right. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. And that's exactly what has happened. When they print these new Bibles and these new, um, these new, um, modern day Bibles with these maps and these images and insights and stuff, that's to really get your mind off, off, off what the scriptures say. And then when they do put in these images and these paintings, this is what you get. Okay. Likenesses of the heathen as opposed to what the scriptures say. About the Israelites. Matter of fact, let's go to the book of Job. Right? I'm going to go to the book of Job. All right? And then you can see this is what the scriptures say Adam and Eve was formed, man was formed of the dust of the ground. Okay? All right, bear me one second. Job. All right, this is Book of Job. All right, let's see. It speaks about. Chapter 30. Yep, Job chapter 30 and verse 30. All right? This is the the uh the the prophet Job. Alright, so it says, My skin, right, Job chapter 30 and 30, my skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. Okay? Let's go to another classic scripture. All right? And these are just basics, but this is what the Bible says when you go into it. Okay? Let's go to uh, what's that? Song of Solomon. All right? Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. All right? And this is Solomon. Okay? Like like now, today, in modern times, in modern times, we say, I'm black and beautiful. Same thing. 
because our spirit, so-called black people here in America, resonate with the Bible. Okay. All right. Yeah, I tell you what, how many uh, uh, Catholic churches uh, um, has a praise team that can, <laughs> you know, sing as well as a so-called black church can, you know? Because our spirit is 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 bound, so to speak, to the scriptures. Okay, but that's what happened. They they sought to paint the likeness of their images into uh, the Bible. Now this is let's see here one more. All right, you got Jacob and Laban. All right, or Laban. Right now, you see Moses saved from the river. Okay, and you see all these people here are so called white people. All right, but then when you go to that same here, so called black people, and now, like I said, a child will be confused. Like, wait a second, so who's who? That's why I went into the scriptures and just read a couple of the color scriptures that we use uh, um, to uh, show that um, we are uh, um, who we say we are, you know. Um, and it's clearly Egypt. You see the pyramids in the back that they're depicting here, you know. And all of these are, are of course, artist renditions. Uh, um, but when you read the scriptures, uh, it's... It's self-evident what the Bible's talking about. But this is what they do, you know, and this brings confusion to our children. But that's why we go out there on the streets and we teach and we let our people know what the truth is. You know, you know, but no matter what they say is politically correct. You know? Uh but with uh with that, um, I hope it was edifying. Um, I want to give our praises, our glory, and our honors unto Yahweh Bashami Awa Shai. Uh, by Shaman Kapodash. Of course, you know, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And uh, Shalom.